We'll see how the week goes with some of those guys. You know, a couple of the guys that missed last week. Um, I think it's all moving in a really good direction with them, and we'll just see kind of where we're practice today. Uh, you'll likely see them at practice today. What about Cam Taylor Burton? Same, same boat. DJ Reader is sick today, so you won't see him at practice. That's why. Yeah, good. He, he's been around everything he's supposed to be around. Um, so, again, it, it's good to, to have him out there. I think he lifts everybody up and uh, provides value, you know, even when he's not playing. Yeah, I, obviously the Steelers' offense is their offense, but we'll, it's hard going in with an unknown of the new coordinator at all? You know, we'll just you got to be ready to react as the game goes. they got guys on staff that have called plays before at other places, so – um, they obviously have a very quality staff they believe in. So, uh, you know, you got to plan for the Pittsburgh offense and be ready to react if, if you notice anything differently. In your weekly practice, what's Jay Ryan like? Um, same as when he was a backup, really. You know, now you're just, instead of instead of talking to Joe, you're more turning your attention to Jake. But uh, same conversations, same, same questions that he's always asked. Jake's been good about that. Understanding the role of the backup is um, – you know, again, I've said this before, you're an extension of the coaching staff. If you feel like there's something that hasn't been said or covered, you know, you got to be the one that's been. Um, Jake continues to do that. And so, again, the meetings so far have been great. What are some good questions that Jake asked? Or I mean, just specific to, to progressions and coverages and all the kind of stuff that comes up in the quarterback room. What would Chase Brown have to show you this week to be able to play on Sunday? I, you know, he's. I think he's feeling pretty good. Um, <clears throat> We, we haven't done any full speed stuff yet. It's just been more walkthrough stuff. But um, I'm encouraged with where he's at right now. So we'll, we'll see as we get through these next three days. But I'm encouraged by him. What kind of change of pace? You know, the old days, they call that maybe a change of pace back. Is he? Does he have the potential to be that for you guys? Well, I, I think he's been a productive back when he's gotten his opportunities in, in college. We haven't given him many opportunities yet. It was kind of... Um, he was building a role for himself, you know, pre-injury. So now we just got to see uh, what he's retained and what he can come back to and do. And, and obviously the muscle memory stuff from being in practice is going to help him um, to label it change of pace back. I mean, we, we've got roles for a lot of the players on our offense that we utilize in different situations. And, and uh, you know, he'd be one of the guys that fits that category. Is that an antiquated term? Like, is that offense evolved to the point where so many backs do so many different roles? I, I think it's just a matter of – finding the strength of each guy, you know, and, and what you can give them to, to involve them. And you're trying to play to their strength as best you can. And so, yeah, some guys, maybe there's there's run scheme that fits them better. And so as you're trying to bring them along, you feel like you give them more of that. Some guys are maybe better in protection. Some are better in, in route running on third down. And um, so, you know, that's I, I don't think it's antiquated. I, I think it's th there's a reason for that being said. It's just different teams use different guys for different reasons. I think it's been good to continue to get them the experience they've gotten, you know, and um, you learn more just from getting out there and playing and reacting to different tackles you're going against and different protection looks and uh, Lord knows we've seen different running schemes, you know, from, from week to week. And so I just think the more that they get a chance to get out there and, and apply what they're taking to the meetings and practice and get to do live against another team has, has been beneficial for them. Obviously, Jamar has always had a very, very big role. But, you know, with Burrow out, does, does he almost carry even more importance? As he should, you know, it's he's always a guy that's dangerous with the ball in his hands and draws a lot of attention from the defense. And so we want to continue to, to apply him in any way we can to, to help him allow us to win the game. Um, at the same time, you don't want to bang your head against the wall and force balls to people. And, and we've got a productive offense. We've got a lot of people that can make plays as well. So there, there's certainly that balance. But involving Jamar is always the wisest thing to do. We've seen that for years, you know, and so that, that's nothing new. Um, the way the game went, it just it, it didn't work out to get him the ball as, as much as, as you'd like to hope. But um, that's just – that's life in the NFL. Is that, like, the one advantage of Jake having direction camp? Like, he's seen different looks, specifically with Jamar and kind of how Jamar maybe uniquely can beat 
I think it's helpful that that he's gotten more reps. You know, I know it was a couple months ago, but throwing to to guys like Jamar, whereas the backup normally wouldn't get that opportunity. So he, you know, he's got whatever thirty days of of work there with Jamar that um, most backups normally wouldn't have. Over the past couple of years, when Jake would come back from some of the off season work that he did on his own, was it really noticeable? And if so, what stood out? I I would say I'm aware that those guys do that kind of stuff and, and maybe tweak something fundamentally. Um, I, I think that, you know, our belief in him has certainly grown every single year that's passed. And so whether that's because of, of work he's done on his own, um, his confidence in the system as he's been here for that amount of time. And uh, so you can see his confidence within the team. I think there's team responds that the right way. He, he's a guy that is just always here. And so that, that's a positive thing because he's around his teammates a lot. He's around his coaches a lot. He's around different support staff members a lot. You want that from, from your quarterback and your key players um, where everybody's around him, likes being around him, has confidence in him, pulling hard for them. Um, you know, that, that's a big element in the NFL. you got a guy you're pulling hard for. And, and I think everybody in this building is pulling hard for Jake because they've seen the work he's put in and what he's gone through over the several years here and always having the decisions to make at the end of the season. Do I go to somebody's active roster that wants me? Do I stay here where I think I've got a future? And, and you know, he's always stood by his word. We've always stood by our word that we're going to let you compete. And, and he's done everything he could to take advantage of that opportunity. And then here he is. You know, he gets this – the moment he's kind of been waiting for his, his whole career. And uh, proud of him for, for – going through that the right way and getting to where he is today. And now we've got the confidence that he can go win games for us. Jack, a lot of people are going to say, how does this team win without Joe Burrow? But in your mind, is the mark of a good team going to be a great team, a team that can win despite injuries, despite an injury to a star quarterback? Yeah, you're, every team faces adversity in this league. Every team loses good players. Um, it's got to come down to the strength of your locker room and the character in the room and just find ways to win the game. Whether you're winning the turnover battle, whether you're winning, scoring a lot more points on every drive, um, whether you're winning on special teams, you know, you're at the point of the year where that none of that matters. You just got to find a way to win the game. And and our team is dead set on, on finding a way to do that. But Jake seems to have found ways to make contributions. Uh, Lou was saying oh, on Tuesdays, he, he'll study yeah. tape with defensive players and give them tips on what the quarterback might be thinking as they're looking at uh, video and all that sort of thing. Is, is, is that typical of him? And, and anything else that you can think of? That no. That's typical of him. He's, he's been doing that. Um, I know he did that last year. I know he did it this year. Um, last year he was on the practice squad doing the same thing. So he's, he's a football junkie. It's important to him. Um, that's why he's had success at every step of his career. You know, that's why he's a record-setting high school quarterback. That's why he's a record-setting college quarterback. That's why he's um, gotten an opportunity to stay in Minnesota there for a while and continue to compete. And then when it was time for a change, he came here and he's had the opportunity for a while because – uh, he affects the people that he's around in a very positive way, and, and you want to continue to give him opportunities because you see something there. And Again, I, I put a lot of value in guys that have played a lot of football over the course of their career. There, there's sometimes, you know, you might get a college quarterback that's really played one year, um, talented, all that. But Jake's, Jake's a guy who's played a lot of real football, and, and uh, I think that that matters, and I think that'll benefit us. You also kind of look at what he had to overcome with his shoulder physical toughness he's shown over his career too mm -hmm. yeah I mean it's again he's just a gamer he's a guy that um, is doing whatever it takes to to put himself in a good position whether that's through injury whether that's extra film prep whatever it is he's he's done that so where would you put his uh, you know his uh, legs and his ability to move that seems to be something that kind of separates him uh, yeah um you want to give me five quarterbacks and I'll stack them in terms of <laughs> no, this is just kind of like uh, I mean where I think, yeah, I, I think some guys, when the lights come on, um, I don't know what Jake runs in the 40. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know what it is, but but some guys like him just have this knack of making plays with their legs and extended plays, and we've seen that from him in the preseason. Um, we've seen it from him last week in the game, and, and some guys, it doesn't matter what your time speed is. I'm not trying to knock him. It's probably better than I think, but he just finds a way to, to find that space and, and the awareness of when to do it. And go get your team a first down, you know, or go get an explosive play that that you know propels a drive forward and allows you to go score points. And I think Jack's got, I mean, uh, uh, he's Jake's got that trait to him, and however you want to describe that. And uh, you know, again, I, I think part of that is just his overall playing experience. He's played in a lot of games and, and understands how to handle those moments. What's the MVP of the Thanksgiving Day spread? The food item. 
Um, I like pecan pie. It's my favorite. Pecan. One you will stay away from. Is there a food you will um, stay away gravy from? Gravy in, in certain certain settings. You know, I don't like gravy on mashed potatoes. I like it on a biscuit. I don't like it on mashed potatoes. So there's. Uh, yeah, there there's not many things I stay away from. I'm not gonna lie. I don't know what it is. Um, I don't know. I, I I honestly don't know what the reasoning is. It's just. I don't think uh, unless she puts it in there. If she puts it in there, then I, I'm, it's in there. But I don't pay much attention. I just stuff it in my mouth. Exactly. here, and every day I am grateful for my experience to have played professional football. As a player, I realize self-motivation, leadership, and appreciating your teammates are key. At First Star Logistics, you can use those same attributes to create the life you want for you and your family. Build your future by working hard like I did. You'll see results both on and off the field. Call First Star Logistics today and be part of our winning team.